Welcome back, NFL fans. We have the Week 5 Spread Pick Show. Coming off a week where I went 6-7-2, and two. not ideal, but it was funny because the way I wrote down the games last week in order, I was started, I started off like 5-0. and oh. I was like, holy crap, Like I had a great week. And then I went on to the 4 o'clock games, just L, 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 L. I got the Chiefs one right, but a lot of L's in the afternoon slate. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it was all right, you know, a little below 500, 28-30-3 on the year. So we're getting there. Um, Survivor pick is still going strong. I took the Packers last week, and that was a scary one because, you know, Bailey Zappi almost beat Aaron Rodgers like we all thought, which is just wild. But the Packers, they got the uh, game-winning field goal in OT as time expired. So this week I feel very confident about my Survivor pick because I had not used this team yet. And you guys probably know who I'm talking about, but we'll get to that. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy the video, and let's get into week number five. Timestamps for each game will be in the description. First game, London, once again, 9.30 a.m. on the Eastern Time Zone, which I love getting up early. Thanks, NFL. The Giants, my Giants, are at the Green Bay Packers, technically at the Packers, but the Packers are minus eight, which is no surprise for any Giants or Packers fans. I do do Giants game previews on Fridays. So if you want like a more in-depth look at that game, I will be doing that tomorrow, but not right now. So anyway, for the purposes of this show, Giants plus eight, not sure who's playing quarterback for the Giants. That's a big thing. Daniel Jones has practice. He said he's feeling better. Tyrod Taylor, I believe, was limited at practice today, so even he might have a chance to suit up. I'm feeling better about the Giants' quarterback situation. The Giants still can't pass the ball. That's a problem. But you can run on the Green Bay Packers' defense. I do like that aspect. The Packers are not the Packers of old. When they had Devontae Adams, they can put up 30-plus points any given week. Now the Packers' offense is more run heavy. Let's give it to Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, 25, 30 times a game, and let's just kind of kill the clock, rely on our defense. So with that said, and the Giants having much better coaching this year, I think the Giants can keep this close. I would be pretty surprised if the Giants won this game, of course, but I would say Green Bay, you know, maybe they win this game by five, six, seven points. The Giants would cover. So I will take the Giants for the purposes of this show. I would be pretty surprised if we win, but I think the Giants can cover the plus eight. One o'clock games, Pittsburgh Steelers at the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are a 14 point favorite. My goodness. Um, so when I was like thinking of what the spread would be in my head, I was thinking like, ah, maybe Bills by nine and a half, but no, it was 14 points. And honestly, just thinking about how the Bills play versus rookie quarterbacks, I'm thinking about their matchups versus Zach Wilson last year. I'm thinking about how Davis Mills had zero points against the Bills last year in Buffalo. And like the Bills in Buffalo are just such a pretty much unstoppable force. Like they just destroy bad teams. And I don't think Pittsburgh is that good. I mean, Kenny Pickett's making his first NFL start in this game. And this is not an ideal situation for any young quarterback. I'm not a guy who just looks at the box score. I know that Kenny Pickett's interceptions last week, at least two of them were not his fault, but I don't care who you are. It is a tough environment for any rookie quarterback, and the Steelers' defense might be without Minka Fitzpatrick. They might be missing another cornerback as well, but just Pittsburgh's secondary is banged up. I mean, Buffalo kills bad teams at home. I would be surprised if the Bills don't win by 20. So I am taking the Bills as a minus 14. It seems like a pretty easy one to me, but it is a lot of points, so you never know. Next, the LA Chargers go out east, not all the way to the east coast, but out east, the eastern time zone, to play the Cleveland Browns. And the Chargers are a minus two on the road. And I remember this game because I remember, I think it was the last time the Chargers played in Cleveland. The Chargers surrendered the one game the Browns won in two years. I'm sure you guys remember how the Browns went 0-16 and then 1-15. That one game they won out of those 32 games was against the Chargers. So, yeah, I mean, the last time the Chargers were here, it was the Phillip Rivers-led Chargers, but still, that's pretty bad. Um, So that came to my mind. But for this game, I think the Chargers can pass in this game. I mean, the Browns' defense has not been as good as expected. I think coming into the year, people looked at the Browns' roster Uh, defensively on paper and said, oh, that's a good defense. They'll be fine. But the Browns defense has been disappointing so far. And Justin Herbert, I do believe, still leads the NFL in passing yards. He has like nine passing touchdowns this year. Herbert's a stud. They still might be without Keenan Allen, which sucks. He's going to miss like his fourth game with the hamstring. He had like a bit of a setback. But even without him, I think with even Mike Williams, we saw Eckler pop off. You still have um, Gerald Everett at tight end, guys like Josh Palmer. The Chargers offense should be fine. Now, my concern, of course, is Nick Chubb versus this Chargers run defense. The Chargers run defense has sucked forever, it feels like. And of course, Nick Chubb is like, 
leading the NFL in rushing yards right now. So that is a concern for me. But if they can just stop Nick Chubb, I really don't have many concerns about the Chargers in this game. It's only two points. If you're asking me outright who wins this game, I do think it's the Chargers. But the Chargers tend to let people down. So we'll find out here. But yeah, Cleveland, they're a bit banged up on defense. I know they got Greedy Williams back at cornerback, but still, that's like not enough for me to change my mind. So I will go with the Chargers minus two. Next, the Chicago Bears. They are at the Minnesota Vikings NFC North battle here. Chicago's two and two, Minnesota three and one. And the Vikings are a minus seven and a half. Not really much of a surprise. I was hoping to get seven here. And of course, with that said, I'm going to take the Vikings. I know the Vikings, they played in London last week. They barely got by Andy Dalton and the Saints. But I mean, that was like a very well-fought game on both sides, but I I watched a full game with the Bears on Sunday because the Giants played the Bears. They are such a tough offense to watch. There is so much on Justin Fields' shoulders. Their offensive line is not good. Their receivers are not really getting open. I mean, even the one pass that Fields had to Darnell Mooney was like such a great ball, Um, and it was a great catch too, but still, like that Bears offense scares me. I just don't think they're going to move the ball that well. They might get their running back Montgomery back. Okay, that might help them out a bit here. In Minnesota, they're a bit inconsistent, but you are getting Kirk Cousins, not in prime time, no spotlight. This is not the London game where it's the only game on. You're getting Kirk Cousins, one o'clock slot. And I just think the Vikings are a much better team. I was high on them coming into the year. I was not really a believer in the Bears. And I have not, I know the Bears are two and two, but they beat the Niners in a monsoon. They beat the Texans. I mean, they lost to a Giants team that is not better than the Vikings. They lost by eight. So, I mean, I think the Vikings can take care of business here. I'll take the Vikings minus seven and a half. Next, we have the Detroit Lions at the New England Patriots. Kind of a weird game. I don't know what to expect here, but New England is favored by three and a half points. It is a one o'clock game at Gillette, so I don't know. I mean, the Patriots have Billy Zappi. I would be surprised if Mac Jones played. They just uh, placed Brian Hoyer on IR, so it's either Mac Jones or Zappi. Zappi looked fine last week. I mean, he was throwing those lob passes in, in pretty accurate areas, so I'll give him that, but um. You know, listen, if the Patriots are going to win, it's going to be one of those games where they just run the ball with Harris and Ramondre and try to just, you know, chew the clock up and, and keep the ball for 35, 40 minutes of this game. The Lions are interesting because they have the number one ranked offense, but the 32nd ranked defense, which is last. So, yeah, it's I've never seen something like that before. It's just very drastic in each direction. But the Lions are probably still without Amon Ross St. Brown and they were without their running back DeAndre Swift. Without them, it's going to be tougher, but we saw TJ Hawkinson pop off last week. New England has allowed some pretty big tight end performances this year. I know Mark Andrews comes to mind. I think there was someone else, but yeah, I mean, look, they can probably exploit them in the pass game, but Jared Goff, I believe this is his first game outdoors. We'll see how he fares in that environment. I don't know what the weather is in New England this weekend, but we'll find out on Sunday. Before this game, I'm going to take the Lions. I don't feel great about it. I have no feel for this game, but if you know, if you've been following the Lions the past couple of years since Dan Campbell's been their coach, it's like every time they're an underdog, you should probably take the Lions, and every time they're favored, you should probably fade the Lions. That's what I did last week. I took the Seahawks. It worked out. They won the game outright. So this is one where it's like, okay, it's only three and a half points, but I'm going to take the Lions. I think these teams are kind of close talent-wise. The Lions offensive line is really good. They can probably run the ball with Jamal Williams. And this is not a Patriots defense that I fear like I did it back in the past. Like this is not a Patriots defense from four or five years ago. I think their big year was 2019 when they got all those turnovers or 2018. Um, So yeah, I don't fear it like I used to. It's hard to rely on Jared Goff, but I'm doing it. I'll take the Lions plus three and a half. Next, the Seattle Seahawks are at the New Orleans Saints, and the Saints are favorites by six, which kind of surprised me. I mean, Seattle's still getting no respect out here. I am on record saying the Seahawks suck. I did say that like two or three weeks ago when they played the Niners and lost by a lot. That was the game Trey Lance got hurt, but... um. I was off the Seahawks that week. I took them last week. I figured, okay, they can keep that game close. The Lions defense stinks. And listen, Geno Smith this year, I got to say, man, he's been he's been good. I, I think he has the highest completion percentage in the NFL. And it's not like dink and dunk high completion percentage. It's like he has a higher yards per attempt than guys like Aaron Rodgers, Justin Herbert, and like a few other elite quarterbacks. I heard this on a podcast today. But like, Geno Smith is actually good at football. Maybe. I don't know. But we're seeing, uh, you know, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, even Will Disley get involved there. I'm going to take Seattle plus six. I just think it's too many points. I mean, 
Jameis Winston has yet to practice. Michael Thomas has yet to practice for the Saints. Alvin Kamara was limited last week. He did not play. That kind of screwed people over in fantasy because it was an early game. But Michael Thomas and Jameis Winston have not yet practiced here on Wednesday or Thursday. Today's Thursday. Yeah, they have not practiced yet on Thursday. So that's a bit of a concern. And the Saints defense has not been as good as we expected it to be so far, which is a bit disappointing. So I know Seattle's defense is not very good. And of course, you know, this might be a game where Chris Olave, my boy, has like 180 yards and two touchdowns. I could definitely see that being the case. But with how efficient this Seahawks offense looks right now, I just think they can kind of keep it close. I think the Saints win, but it is a plus six. So I'll take Seattle plus six in this one. Next, we have the Miami Dolphins at the New York Jets AFC East matchup. The Jets are two and two. Look at them. But we have the Dolphins. They are three and one. Of course, they last they lost last week on Thursday Night Football, the scary injury to their quarterback to a tongue of Iloa. And this game will be Teddy Bridgewater, I'm sure. And listen, I, I'm not going to be one of those people that says Tua to Bridgewater is a lateral move. It's not. Tua is a bit better than uh, Teddy Bridgewater. It's not by a substantial amount, but still, they are downgrading a quarterback a bit in this game. I just think these, this line might be a bit influenced because of what happened this past week. I don't want to put too much stock into one week in the NFL. So much changes. It's so week to week, so I don't want to overreact here. But you look at both these teams. The Dolphins, they lose on national TV Thursday night game. Their quarterback goes down. Bad vibes. You look at the Jets. They were down 20-10 to 10 in Pittsburgh. Zach Wilson, season debut, sophomore season debut. He leads a comeback, and the Jets win that game by four on the road. So I just think with those two things... This line should probably be more like Dolphins minus five and a half, Dolphins minus six, and we're getting minus three and a half. So I'm like, you know what? I will take the Dolphins. I I could see a scenario where the Jets just win this game. Maybe the Dolphins are just not that team, right? Maybe they kind of just outplayed their expectations the first three weeks and they're not that great. But I just think the Dolphins are a better team roster wise. The Jets are still young. And I'm going to bet on the talent of the Dolphins in this one. So I will take Miami minus three and a half. Next, we have the Atlanta Falcons at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are a minus nine and a half. I'm taking Tampa. I think Tampa wins this game by a lot. I got to be honest. I mean, I've been kind of on the Falcons here the past few weeks. I've been buying into them. And I think the Falcons are undefeated against the spread, right? I'm pretty sure they're 4-0. I could be wrong, but I'm, they're either 3-1 or 4-0. They're good against the spread. But this is the one time I am going against the Atlanta Falcons. I think this is a game where the Buccaneers will destroy them. I think Tampa coming off that bad loss on national TV. Brady losing two games in a row, which you don't see very often. I think they come out just firing in this game. I would not be surprised if it's like 24 to three at halftime or something this feels like one of those games um Atlanta I mean their offense has been pretty exciting so far but no Cordero Patterson of course he's on IR they're not using Kyle Pitts which is weird and he has a hamstring injury now so he might miss this game they have their rookie Drake London but I mean Atlanta's offense it might be kind of on the decline because of some of the injuries going on here and Tampa's getting healthier. They're getting, you know, Godwin came back. Julio came back last week. Mike Evans is back from that suspension. So Brady got a bit banged up, but he said today he's playing. So I love the Buccaneers in this game. I'd probably put real money on it. So we'll find out what I do on Sunday. But yeah, Bucks minus nine and a half is one of my favorites this week. Next is the Tennessee Titans on the road at the Washington Commanders. Good old FedEx field. One o'clock game and the Titans are one and a half points road favorites. So I really wanted to take the Titans, but I try to think in like this perspective of like who the hell wants to take Washington right now. And when that's the mindset, you're better off taking that team because in the end, we know Vegas wins, right? That's how it works. So I just, I'm going to take Washington. I, I don't feel good about it. And like their offensive line slash Carson Wentz holding the ball too long has been a big, <laughs> it's been a big problem for this uh, passing offense for Washington and they have not ran the ball that well recently, and they're playing from behind in all these games, but their defense is getting healthier. I just think at some point, like, they're going to get it together. I don't think Washington is that good, but they're also not this terrible, so I think they're more of, like, they, I had them at, like, seven, maybe seven, eight wins this year. Like, they're not this bad, so I'll take Washington as home underdogs plus one and a half, but I, of course, could see a world where the Titans win this game by a lot. It wouldn't shock me, so... 
I don't know. For the hell of it, I'm taking Washington because I feel like nobody else wants to take them right now. Next, the Houston Texans are at the Jacksonville Jaguars. AFC South matchup here. Jaguars favored by seven. Um, so yeah, the Jaguars, of course, they have turned a corner, it looks like. Took a bit of a step back last week, but but there is context. It was very crappy weather. You know, Trevor Lawrence had five turnovers in that game, four of them via fumble. I think that was one of those games I can chalk up as like, okay, bad weather, I can move past it. So I'm giving the Jaguars a bit of a pass here. The Texans, they were down like 28-3 to to the uh, Chargers on Sunday. They came all the way back and made it like a four-point game, right? So you look at the final score of that Texans-Chargers game, you're like, oh, the Texans gave them a good fight. But in reality, the Chargers won that game at halftime. It was pretty much over. And Jacksonville's coming off a disappointing game versus the Eagles. So I think Jacksonville is better than the um, Texans by a good amount, and I think last week can definitely make it kind of shrink the spread in a way. So minus seven, it might have been minus eight and a half or nine without last week being influenced here. So I think Jacksonville can win this one by a touchdown. I will take them. They should be able to pass all over this Texans team and especially run the ball. The Texans run defense is so bad. Like James Robinson might have one of those monster games. He has looked really good off the Achilles injury, so he might have a big game in this one. I will take the Jaguars, minus seven. Next, we have the San Francisco 49ers on the road at the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers are six point or six and a half point underdogs at home, which is not a surprise. Now, I'm going to make the same argument I did for the Commanders game. It's that no soul in this world wants to take the Panthers right now. The Panthers are such... like. That everything you hear about Carolina is bad. Baker Mayfield sucks. Matt Rule is going to get fired. And, you know, will Sam Darnold replace uh, Baker Mayfield? You hear all this stuff about Carolina. And it's, it's, look, it's definitely warranted. They have been really bad this year. But the reason I'm taking the Panthers here is because nobody wants to take the Panthers right now. And I think this line opened up at six and a half and it has not moved yet. And that probably should tell you something. Like, I just think for some odd reason, this game will be close. The Niners are a much better team. But they are coming off a short week having played Monday, and they might travel to Carolina and think this game will be a cakewalk and not take it seriously. And if that's the case, maybe, just maybe the Panthers lose by three or four and not lose by, you know, 21. It could happen. And, you know, the Panthers had a pretty good pass defense last year. Their offense can really only go up from here, I think. So, I don't know. Maybe they find a way to make this one competitive, but I just don't think anyone wants to take them right now. So, with that logic, I will take the Panthers plus six and a half. Next is the Dallas Cowboys at the Los Angeles Rams. This is kind of like the marquee game here out of the four o'clock ones, and I'm sure it's the game on Fox, but... The Rams are a minus five and a half coming off a bad primetime loss on Sunday night. Actually, that was Monday night. I'm sorry. I just talked about that game. Wow. But anyway, yeah, so Monday night loss. Um, but the Rams are still favored by five and a half. And that's kind of a surprise. But I do think this is a get right game for the Los Angeles Rams. We saw it in a week two when they came off the loss versus the um, versus the Bills. They came out against Atlanta and took a 28-3 to lead. Of course, Atlanta almost came back and won that game somehow. But I think the Rams, when they want to flip the switch versus a bad team, they can. Now, Dallas is not a bad team. I don't want to say that. Their defense is really good. But I think the Rams' defense will step up in this game. This whole Cooper Rush thing being undefeated, it has to stop at some point. So I think this will be a game the Rams win. I get that 5.5 is a lot here. But I just feel like the Rams' offense looked so bad on Monday but the Niners' defense is elite. It's like top three in the NFL. So Dallas is not top three, I don't think. They're up there. They're top 10, no doubt about it. But they're not like the Niners' level. So I do hope that the Rams' offense can figure some shit out here and just put up more points. And I think the Rams' defense shows up once again. So I will take the Rams' minus 5.5. It doesn't feel great, but I will do it for this week. Next is the Philadelphia Eagles at the Arizona Cardinals. And the Eagles are five-point favorites on the road here. Um, yeah, I mean, look, Philly has looked like one of the, if not the most dominant team in football this year, the last remaining undefeated team. I hate it as a Giants fan, but I got to give them credit. They have looked awesome. And the Cardinals are just a team I can't figure out. 
And I just I can't rely on their offense. They're they're, they're very hard to trust right now. James Conner has not gotten anything going on the ground so far this year. They can't run the ball efficiently unless it's Kyler Murray taking off. They are without DeAndre Hopkins, I think, for either one or two more weeks. He's not playing in this one. So these teams are just on different levels, and, and the Cardinals really can't get a pass rush. That's a problem because, you know, Jalen Hurts, I think if you give him enough time, can find A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard, and, and they'll be fine. So this Cardinals defense has been pretty underwhelming this season. Their offense has been pretty underwhelming. Sometimes they get it going in garbage time or against bad teams like last week versus the um, versus the Panthers. But even last week, Arizona's de- uh, Arizona's offense was not that impressive. I mean, they had some nice plays. That Marquise Brown touchdown catch was cool. But like the Cardinals offense last week did not impress me that much. And the Eagles so far, they have impressed me very much. Five is a lot. There's a chance for a backdoor here, of course, if the Eagles go up early. But I think the Eagles will win this one by a good amount, so I will take Philly minus five. Next, we have the Cincinnati Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday night football. The Ravens are favorites by three points. Um, I didn't know who to take. This is a tough one. I'm not going to lie. You have the Bengals coming off of extended rest, and the Bengals showed signs on Thursday of maybe getting their crap together offensively. Joe Burrow, I don't think was sacked in that game. I think he was touched one time in that game. Um, they didn't run the ball much more efficiently. I mean, Joe Mixon's getting his carries, but not running at an efficient clip so far this year. But the Bengals passing offense looked as good as it has the entire season. And Baltimore, they are coming off a very tough loss, a game where, of course, it was a fourth and two near the goal line. They could have made a field goal to go up three. They decided to go for it. Lamar threw the interception. So they're coming off a tough loss. It just comes down to who do you think is the better team? And coming into this year, I was higher on the Ravens. I know they have dealt with some injuries this year, just like last year. It's pretty unfortunate for the uh, Ravens right now, but I still think Baltimore is better. So I'm going to take the Ravens minus three. I don't feel fantastic about it. I can definitely see the Bengals winning this game outright, but the Ravens are home, coming off a bad loss, very well coached team. So I will take the Ravens minus three. Last game, Monday night, we have the uh, Las Vegas Raiders on the road at the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are favorites by seven. Um, I'm taking the Chiefs. It's a simple one for me. I mean, these teams played last year twice, of course, in division, and the Chiefs put up over 40 points in both those games. And the Chiefs' offensive line, if they play the way they did last week, they are unbeatable. This team is absolutely unbeatable. If they can run the ball with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and Isaiah Pacheco the way they did and have the offensive line play that well and, of course, have one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL in Patrick Mahomes, they are unbeatable. So this Chiefs team right now, I don't want to step in front of them. They killed the Raiders last year in those matchups. The Chiefs are home. It's prime time. Give me the Chiefs. I mean, there's not much thought put into it by me. I'm not giving the Raiders much of a chance. Maybe I'll regret that, but as you as you guys know, if you've watched this show with me before, you know I can't stand the Raiders. I hope they lose 55 to nothing. So anyway, that's my pick here. The Chiefs minus seven. My survivor pick. I hinted it earlier that I did not use this team yet, and that means they're a good team. The Bills. The Bills are my survivor pick here. I've already used the Ravens, the Broncos, the Bengals, the Packers. Now it's the Bills. Five weeks in here, looking to go 5-0. and oh. I know some people have a strategy of like not using the good teams until the end, but listen, I want to get to the end, so I'm, I'm trying to stay alive as much as possible, take this week by week. I've never done Survivor before, so this is my strategy of just staying alive each week. We'll see how far this goes. I can't see a scenario where the Bills lose, unless Josh Allen gets hurt. That's, I guess, one possibility, but I know the Steelers beat the Bills at home last year in week one. But even in that game, the Bills outplayed them, but just some fluky shit happened. So I'm not worried about it. Kenny Pickett, you know, rookie quarterback. The Bills should be fine there. They're my survivor pick. All right, so that's going to do it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the Week 5 Spread Pick Show, and I'll talk to you guys next week.